Welcome back to Spearfishing Vanuatu, where I'm going to try and take you along with me as I relive what was a very different year of adventures and learning. As Vanuatu's borders remain closed and the tourism and hospitality industries all but closed down, our little family made a move away from the expensive and stressful systems of town living. Packing up and storing all the clutter that accumulates over time, along with the boat and truck, we jumped aboard a local cargo ship and headed north to Panama province, where we would spend most of the year living on the side of a mountain in the remote bush of Umbay Island. Off-grid growing food and hunting for added sustenance for ourselves and to trade, we left behind the endless search for money that pays for mainstream living, replacing those stresses with a simplistic system where the energy that you expand is returned tenfold through connection with the land, the ocean and the people who live a truly rich life of natural abundance, connection to nature and their living customs which help to mark every important moment in celebration and also guide a people towards right action in everyday life. There is something truly and deeply fulfilling about spending months caring for your own livestock using harvested sustenance, growing vegetables as well as harvesting from the natural environments of the bush and the ocean as part of your daily routine, that at the point when it all comes to fruition and combines in a moment to create some of the most soul-filling and delicious healthy meals that can be shared and enjoyed together with family, for me, there isn't a lot more needed to live a happy life than this. After spending most of the year in Umbai, we made the decision to head back to Port Vila for the last third of the year, in hope that tourism may return, giving me the opportunity to resume guiding visiting divers through the islands north of Afate. Upon arrival, I renewed my commercial licensing, fishing licenses, and business license access fees to be able to commercially support our family by diving for market. Using the time to further my knowledge of the spots I have been diving for the past years, whilst also exploring new ground. After some time getting caught up with the costs associated with moving back to town life, it was finally possible to head further north again for the first time this year. Excitement levels were at an all time high as we set out with plans to explore new ground only ever viewed on maps as well as stopping by some of the special spots already dived before to check on the fish life surrounding them when compared to my last visit almost a year earlier. It was the first morning of the first day of this two-day camp dive adventure when I encountered the first fish that was in the size range that I wanted to target on this trip. The fish, an estimated high 40 kilo range dog tooth, came in on a rainbow runner that I had just shot. I wasted no time dropping on the dog tooth before placing a spine shot that halted the fish's ability to swim. Beginning to surface, I felt like the fish was in the bag before noticing halfway through my ascent that there was no pressure on the float line. Just before reaching the surface, I looked down, catching my last glimpse of the dog tooth as it flooded its way down over the second drop off and past 50 meters. Baffled as to what had just occurred, I quickly pulled up the empty line to find that the weld attaching the shark fin tab to my shaft had let go. Devastated, I regrouped on the boat before moving to another section of the island where my unlucky start to the trip continued. First off, my lack of remaining quality shafts had let me down. Now, re-rigging my blue water gun with black rubber rather than the usual aim right red USA latex bands that I normally use, 
caused the amount of pretension to change quickly through these first few hours of use. This caused one of my bands to release from the holding lugs, where it then fouled on my shot line, causing me to have to let go of the gun to be able to surface. Working the fish, I watched my gun trailing behind. As my buddy dove down, seeing the gun come free while he was down, he grabbed it and surfaced. Relieved, I worked the dog tooth before my second buddy placed a shot, worried that the sharks might grab the almost spent fish. Unfortunately, in the confusion of the fight, my buddy had let go of my gun after surfacing with it. Later seeing my small real gun attached to my float, he thought that someone had already attached it, causing him to answer that yes, he had my gun. By the time we realized that it was missing, we made a two hour search zigzagging down current, but my double roller was gone forever. Putting this huge loss behind me, I spent the remainder of the trip diving with my real gun, backing up my buddies on their fish and targeting reef fish for market. Stay tuned as next episode I continue exploring new ground, encounter some amazing fish and have some better luck. If you like the content here please subscribe so that you'll be notified when the next episode goes live. Thank you for your support that's helping me continue doing what I love.